I sugarcoat nothing. If the facts hurt some feelings, then so be it. And the fact of the matter is, this processor should not exist. Which processor am I talking about? The i3-7350K. That's right, an overclockable core i3 from Intel's KB Lake lineup that you've likely heard of by now. We'll get to why it's stupid here in a second, but I want to touch on something else first. We've been able to overclock Skylake i3s in the past, and it's still very possible if your BIOS was archived. More on that here. But what made base clock overclocking so compelling was the price. You weren't being charged a premium for a CPU with an unlocked multiplier. The only additional cost was a Z170 chipset over an H170 or a B150 chipset, but those additional features never hurt anyone, and they typically aren't bank breakers. So when I first saw that Intel released an unlocked Core i3, I got a little giddy. Kind of like the G3258, right? Finally, enthusiast qualities in an affordable CPU. Ha. Ah, right. This processor costs as much as a locked i5, and I've got a feeling that isn't the only thing wrong here. Look, there's nothing wrong with a Core i3 for budget-conscious gaming. I get it, I've been there, it's perfectly viable. But for this price, get yourself an i5, even if the processor is locked. Here's why. I benchmarked three processors, the i3-7350K, of course, the i5-6400, and the i3-6100. That's an unlocked i3, a locked i5, and locked i3. I wanted to run worst case scenarios for the 7350K's two competitors, so I didn't base clock overclock and I didn't unfairly leverage the graphics card on the test bench, that's a GTX 1070 here, hence 1080p gaming resolutions. So the i5-6400 ran at 3.2 GHz with turbo boost, the 6100 ran at 3.7, and the 7350 k was overclocked to 4.9 GHz. Cache and thread counts are also listed here just for reference. Are you ready? So these games, all of them, tell the story. At first glance, you might be thinking, well, Greg, the 7350K isn't far off the i5's mark at all, particularly in the averages. Feel free to pause this video to you know, get a closer look at these, by the way. Minimum slipped a bit further behind on account of the lack of the two extra physical cores for the i3, but nothing substantial caught my eye. Do keep in mind, though, that hyperthreading only goes so far. More on that here. I don't want to dive much into individual game performance, I've done that several times in the past so I think you have a good clue by now how each game utilizes resources, but the point I'm trying to make here is that even if the i3 matched the i5 frame for frame in every single scenario, which it does not, the i5 would still be the better buy. Think about it, we had to push the i3-7350K to 4.9GHz, it was not easy and it was running much hotter than the i5 counterpart. A whole 25 degrees hotter. On top of that, you'll most certainly need an AIO or beefy air cooler. Cooler. I managed to pull it off with a Cryorig R1, but it'll still set you back 80 bucks on its own. That combined with the additional cost of an unlocked multiplier for the i3 make it a terrible buy for anyone and everyone point blank. So the i3-7350K runs hotter, can't keep up in the real world, and is still priced like an i5. That logic. You might think I'm being harsh, I kind of am, but I'm doing it to save you money. Last generation stock i5 outperforms this thing hands down, and the new i5-7400 from KB Lake improves upon this even further with its slightly higher IPC and jumping out of the box frequency. Oh, and for a very similar price. Some facts do hurt some feelings, and if I offended you because you happened to buy an i3-7350K and I ripped on your CPU in this video, I don't frankly care. You should have bought an i5, period. Even if it's a locked i5, you'll be much better off in the long run, and chances are you'd spend less money because the i5 wouldn't require a beefy cooler like the i3-7350K would in order to take advantage of the unlocked multiplier. If you were already looking to spend around 200 US dollars on a processor to begin with, either stick with AMD Zen or buy yourself a true quad-core processor from the blue team. You won't regret it. I've got a few linked in this video's description if you're interested in shopping right now. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, thumbs down. If you feel the complete opposite, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. I've got some homework to do. I cannot wait till the day I don't have to say that anymore. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.